Let's talk next about Sappy, which was what uh, Gary mentioned right there. These guys, also a global player, but Eugene van Aas, the well, he wasn't the founder, but he was the modernizer of the business back in the 1970s and 80s, made a significant move into coated fine papers in the United States market by buying Scott papers. Now, what that means is the glossy stuff that's used in magazines as well as corporate annual reports and that kind of thing. To be fair to them, they are also a player in other kinds of paper, as well as chemical cellulose, which is an important ingredient in the manufacturing now of all sorts of high-tech fabrics and fibers which are used in the clothing industry and elsewhere. Market capitalization, though, has stagnated for many years at about 20 billion rand. I see it's now 21.8 after a nice run-up last year, but a bit of a fall recently. Price-to-earnings ratio probably measured on the prior six-month reports is about 10.6. Mm -hmm. Dividend yield, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's not paying dividend, or it has no. paid a few dividends, yeah, it does, but, but the yield not, is not, not showing not, there. Not, as not a at positive. the moment, no dividends now. So I, mm. the share price chart, why don't we put up the share chart mm. and let's have a look at that because it does set the scene well. It does poorly and then bounces hard <laughs> in 2013, 2014, yeah. but sagging and then it quarterly results last week, it fell quite sharply. Yeah, I mean it had a 6% run up just before those results and then pulled back 6% okay. after. To so not, not, yeah, not too much movement in absolute terms, but uh, I mean if you look at those results, I mean Q3 was uh, flat for them, mm. but, but Q3 you know, for SAPI is generally very, very weak. They actually have their, their biggest quarter is the fourth quarter. So they, I mean if you listen to what Steve Binney is saying, he says f watch these fourth quarter yeah. results, they're going to be far, far better. Okay. But they, they suffering from uh, you know in the US there's just a lack of demand for for the graphic paper which is uh, one but of But that's understandable because we've talked mm. about this many times mm. before the premium printed product like mm. the big fat fashion magazines are mm. largely migrating online or at least the readers are migrating online. Definitely and, and I mean this is a twilight industry that they're operating and that's obviously mm. why they, there's the shift to chemical cellulose but it's not just that it's also the stronger dollar which is allowing there to be even because I mean remember they actually you know manufacture in, in the US as well but it's yeah. actually allowing cheaper imports in which is competing with sappy products mm. in the US which is putting some some pressure on the US business as well. Steve Binney is the new CEO. Remember, we had a few mm. transition personalities come and go, and Ralph Butka unfortunately mm. fell ill. I mean, is under firm hands now? Is there a more settled environment in the boardroom? <laughs> Uh, he's got, yeah, definitely. Uh, he's got, he's got a, a lot of work ahead of him, though. I mm. mean, they are obviously rationalizing the business to some extent. So they, they're selling off, uh, you know, one of the craft mills in South Africa. They're also yep. yeah, selling off a, a, another one. I've forgotten its name now. But, um, you know, just because they don't have the competitive advantage, they're still focusing on, on really that move into chemical cellulose. Well, let's talk about another issue, which is mm. the debt levels. Now, mm. in prior years, they mm. financed some pretty substantial acquisitions in Europe in order mm. to try and get control of the European market, which is still their most important. Mm close down production in order to try and force consolidation. Good mm. and well, but the debt levels go to the moon. Mm. The fact of the matter is, though, in recent years, uh, because Treasury bills issued by major mm. governments, including the US and Europeans, mm. have been so low, there's mm. been quite a big demand for corporate credit. Mm. So sapi has been extremely lucky because mm. what may have been perceived to be crippling debt levels have actually been perfectly well managed mm. because there's been such demand for this sort of semi-high yield paper. So they've gotten, they've dodged a bullet you'd have to say because <laughs> they've got 25 billion rands worth of debt yeah and 20 odd billion rands with a market capitalization. Yeah, no, they, yeah I mean, they're trying to bring, uh, I mean, the net debt now uh, below, I think they, they're talking about 1.8 billion is for now. And they, and they have, they've done a, a very good job there. Also, one of their big, uh, one of their big bonds uh, is maturing 2017, I think it's in okay. June, June or July, which is gonna give them an opportunity to refinance. And like mm. you say, the, the whole environment for refinancing in Europe, I mean, I think it's about 40% of their debt is European debt. Okay. Um, is, uh, you know, they're gonna be able to refinance that yeah. at, at lower costs, which is a, an opportunity for the company. I think it's it's going to be very good for us. And that probably explains the mm. strong share price mm. in the recent years. Mm. Okay, but the chemical cellulose, what, what, mm. that market's also been a bit flat mm. and a little bit oversupplied. Yeah, They're saying that's the future of the company mm. and that's good and well, but is it is there yeah. enough there for you? How are you going to call this one? Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, they're still, they're still trying to move into it aggressively. I mean, what they call it, the, the dissolving wood pulp is what, mm. they're, what they're selling. And, and I mean, if you look at it, it's still, I think, you know, in revenue terms and actual sales numbers, you, you're only looking at about 17% yep. of the business. So there's still, there's still a lot of growth to be had. That's up quite dramatically. So, I mean, they, they are growing in that segment, but, but, you know, as much as guys say this is not a technology-driven industry, I mean, it, it's become 
coming that way. And I mean, mm. they've, they've now also started what, with the, the nanocellulose plant in Netherlands as well, which is <laughs> quite exciting. I mean, you know, and, and they're finding all sorts of new applications for, for um, you, you know, different uh, chemical cellulose. So I think it can, it can be a very exciting industry. I'm not, I'm not going to go hot on Sappy though, mm. but it's, I think it's one that you've got to watch because, you know, at a 10 PE, it's not expensive. Mm. And if they start getting things right, and it, it, it could start to move. And as you said earlier, mm. the fourth quarter would be an important one for mm. them. Mm. I'm going to go with not hot. You're going to go with not I'm hot. Also going not hot. But yeah. perhaps keep it on the watch list.